Hey, how's it guys? In today's video, we'll learn how to conduct an RFM analysis using PANDAS. So RFM analysis is a marketing method that groups customers based on how recently they made a purchase, how often they make purchases, and how much money they spend. And by using this technique, marketers can identify which customers are most valuable and tailor their marketing strategies accordingly. For example, a company can offer promotions to encourage customers who haven't made a purchase in a while to come back and buy again. And by using the Pandas library in Python, we can easily analyze customers' data and identify the pattern that will help us create targeted marketing campaigns. Now, for this tutorial, I'll be using this uh, CSV file, salesdata.csv, and you can download the dataset from the link in the description below in case you want to uh, follow along. All right, so uh, here I uh, open your um, code editor, and I'll be using VS Code, and create a blank Python script. Now to perform the RFM analysis, there are only two libraries that I'll be using, and increase the font size. The first library is going to be the uh, daytime library, which I'm going to use to create the uh, timestamp, and followed by the uh, pandas library. And if you don't have pandas library installed, you can uh, run the command pip install pandas. All right, so let's look at the data set first in terms of uh, which columns that we'll be using to run the uh, FM analysis. All right, so if we look at uh, this table here, all right, so basically the first one to uh, determine is when is the last time a customer made a purchase. And to do that, I'm going to use the order date count. I mean, uh, actually, let me create a copy. All right, so I'll put this in Excel spreadsheet. And that allows me to uh, highlight the cells. All right, so to determine the recency, I'm going to use the order date count. And to determine how often a customer makes a purchase, in this case, we can use the order number to determine the uh, total purchase count by each customer. And to determine the uh, total monetary value from the uh, total purchase by each customer, Right, so here, uh, if we look at this uh, data set here, unfortunately, we don't have the uh, revenue count. That means that we'll have to merely calculate the uh, revenue ourselves. Right, so basically to calculate the revenue, we'll take the uh, unit price minus the discount, then minus the uh, unit cost times the quantity. And here let me uh, highlight the counts. Now going back to the uh, Python script. All right, so here I'm going to reference the pandas library. And to load the CSV file, I'm going to use the read csv method. And I'll pass the uh, file path. And I'll name the output as sales data. All right, so if I go in the run this code block, And I'll import the data set into uh, this uh, sales data object. Now, here, let me move the terminal to the right. All right, so let's see. Now, if I go in the print the uh, sales data object, and that's going to return the uh, table as a data frame. Now, I need to create the revenue count. All right, so here I'm going to name the count. It should last to. To show us to this, I'm going to make a copy of the uh, sales data object and I'll name the copy df. Now, from sales data, I can uh, make a copy using the copy method. And this will create a completely new uh, data frame. And here, let me increase the terminal font size. All right, so here I'm going to create the revenue count. And we know the format is going to be unit price minus uh, the discounts minus unit cost times the uh, order quantity. All right, so let me go ahead and run these two lines. Now, this one thing I want to show you. Here, let me go ahead and print the uh, data types. And if I remember correctly, uh, when we import the data set, And because, here, let me go back. And because 
we're going to uh, group everything based on the customer's ID count, which I forgot to highlight. Now for the customer ID count, everything is an integer. And when we input the customer's ID count, Pandas is going to uh, convert the data type into in64 data type. You also want to make sure that you import the count as a string data type. All right, so here, uh, let's go back. All right, so here I want to uh, create a dictionary to specify the fields down to set the data type mainly. All right, so here, uh, the field name is going to be underscore customer ID. And the data type is going to be string. And this should go here. All right, so when we import the CSS file, we can use the D type parameter to uh, specify the count data type by providing the data type dictionary. And to determine the uh, recency based on the order date. And because uh, this is a date time count, I can simply use the pass dates parameter to specify the counts that is going to be input as a uh, date time count or date time data type. All right, so the count name is going to be order date. Let me go ahead and uh, rerun this code block to make sure that I import the data frame uh, correctly this time. Now, if I put in the DF object, All right, so let me uh, put this back below the uh, script. I think that will give us more room to display uh, the information. All right, so if I print the DF object, All right, so let's see. Here, let me go ahead and uh, print the uh, field data types. Oh, I have a typo. It should be D types. Now, if we look at the customer's ID count, now this time the field is input as a regular text count. And for the order dates count, the counts input as a date time 64 uh, data type, which is what we want. Now when we perform the uh, effort analysis, we don't actually need all the uh, counts. So here I'm going to create a counts list to uh, specify the counts that I want to use. Then I'm going to create a separate data frame called DF data set. I'm going to uh, import the counts that I'll be using to perform the analysis. Now, if we look at uh, this table here, here we go into the Excel spreadsheet. And because uh, this is a pretty outdated uh, data set, now if I use the max function to get the uh, latest uh, dates from the older date count, and here we can see that the uh, latest order dates is going to be December 30, 2020. And I don't want to use today's date to uh, calculate the recency. All right, so here I'm going to create a variable using PD to date time function. Now to calculate the recency, I'm going to use uh, 2021st, January 1st. And I name this as today date. Now to create the RF analysis from the DF data set uh, object, I'm going to group by customer's ID. And here I'm going to insert the uh, aggregate function. All right, so inside the aggregate function, I can uh, specify the uh, function that I want to use to run the operation or run the calculation. And this should be uh, wrapped in a dictionary. All right, so to calculate the recency, we're going to use the order date count. And the formula is going to be today date. And it's going to be January 1st, 2021st. Minus the last order date by the customer. Now here I'm going to convert this to a lambda function. And I'll set the uh, parameter value to v. Basically, uh, this v parameter is going to pass the uh, order dates based on the customer grouping. And I want to grab the uh, last order dates by the customer. 
So here we can reference the v argument that max. And I'll convert this to a daytime object by uh, wrapping the output with a set of parentheses that days. And that'll give us the recency score. Now, to determine the uh, frequency score, which is going to be the total purchase by each customer. And to calculate the recency, we're going to use the order number count. And I want to use the count function to figure out the uh, total purchase count by each customer. And to calculate the uh, monetary value, and it's going to be based on the revenue. Let me see. All right, so let me make this as a, an uppercase R. And let me recreate the revenue count. And to determine the uh, total monetary value, so here I'm going to insert revenue as the uh, calculation count. And I want to sum the uh, total revenue by each customer. Now name the outputs. Uh, FM data set. Now, if I run this code block here, right? So, let's see. Oh, I know why. All right. So, uh, let me recreate the DF object. Now, this time, if I run uh, this code block, All right? So, I'm still getting. Oh, I know why. Right, so this should be revenue, not profit. And today's date is going to be uh, January 1st, 2021. Now if I create the uh, FNDR set object, and that should get created successfully this time. Now if I print our uh, FM data set. All right, so if we look at the uh, table here, so here's the customer ID, which is going to be the index. Then we have the order day score, order number, and the revenue number. Now, what I want to do here is I want to rename the counts. We can use the rename method. All right, so here I can, here let's do this. I'm simply going to insert my code snippet, and it should be revenue. All right, so I want to rename order date to recency order number to frequency and revenue to uh, monetary. And I'm going to set the in-place value to two to permanently uh, replace the uh, count name. All right, so let me rename the accounts. Now the account names are renamed to recency, frequency, and monetary. Now once we have the recency, frequency, and monetary scores, we can now go ahead and assign a scope between uh, 1 to 5 or 1 to 3. It is really up to you based on use case. Now, for this demonstration, I'm going to assign the value between uh, 1 to 5. Now, in Pandas library, there's a function called QCAR function. The QCAR function will equally uh, distribute the uh, value based on the quantile number that you assign. So, for example, uh, here this should be our FM data set. All right, so for example, I want to distribute the uh, data set into uh, five different groupings. I'm going to assign the Q value to five, which stands for quantile. Then I'm going to assign the label between uh, five to one, and five being the uh, highest score and one being the lowest score. Now with the recency score, I want the number to be as low as possible, and for frequency and monetary, I want the number to be as high as possible. So the highest number is going to have a score of five, and the lowest value is going to have a score of one. And for each category, I'm going to uh, assign the output to uh, these three objects, uh, FM. All right, so here we go ahead and run this code block to create uh, these three objects. All right, so if we uh, print R, FM, And I think that's going to uh, print the object three times. But anyway, so uh, let's see. All right, so I want to append uh, the RFM uh, grouping or the ranking to the RFM data set object. All right, so here I'm going to take the RFM data set object. And I'll use the assign method to append uh, those three counts. And here I want to create the recency count. I'll name the count as R. 
is equals to r dar values. Now for the frequency count, I'll name the count as f is equals to f dar values. And for monetary ranking, this is going to be m is equals to m dar values. And I'll name the output as rfm. All right, so at this point, uh, we are pretty much done with the analysis. Now if I print the rfm, the rfm object, all right, so let's take a look. So for the uh, recency ranking for customer ID 1, this customer scores a ranking of 2 for recency test. And for the frequency and monetary ranking, uh, this customer scores a 2 and a 1 based on the total number of purchases and the total revenue generated. Now if we look at this customer, uh, customer ID 29, with the recency uh, value of 2, that gives us the uh, ranking of 5 for recency ranking. And for the uh, total purchase, we have 179. And for the revenue generated, we have 531,770. And that put the uh, customer into the highest bracket. Now, just one more thing. I want to provide two more counts to make the uh, table more meaningful. First, I want to create a grouping to uh, concatenate the ranking based on these three counts into a, a single count. Then I want to create a separate count to add the scores together that we can use to uh, sort the customers based on the total score. All right, so if I run these two lines, and if I print RFM, we now have this uh, table that we can use to create different visualization or create a further analysis to make our analysis more useful. And here's the our uh, FM grouping that we can use uh, to uh, sort the data set. Or we can use the uh, FM score total count to uh, sort the customers based on their total uh, FM score. Right, so this is going to be everything I'm going to cover in this video. And hopefully you guys find this video useful. And if you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to give this video a like and click on the subscribe button. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.